Hello and welcome back. It is day 13 and this is the last lesson of our factoring unit. Today you will learn to factor using the distributive property. Just a reminder, a copy of the handout is provided in the description below for you to follow along. Let's finish this unit. Oh yeah, it's that time again. We have some math problems here and we need you to do them now. Pause the video, complete the problems, and return to the video when you're done. All right, let's go over this do now. Um, this would be a nice quick one. Um, I think this goes back to, I think, third grade when we learned our distributive property. Um, so remember, distributive property was something like A, B plus something like this, where you take A multiplied by B, so you get A, B. And then you take A multiplied by C, AC. So we're just going to use that today. So let's do that real quick. Uh, 3 times X, 3X, and 3 times 2, plus 6. Game over. Nice and simple. Let's do these all really fast here. So negative 2 times positive 4X, and negative 2 times negative 5. Game over. Distributive property, no problem. 3x cubed plus 6x squared. Subtract 9x. Okay. And the last one. Uh, multiply, multiply, multiply. 8x cubed. Subtract 10x squared. And the last one is negative 6x. Game over. Okay. Um, the reason we started with this one, because today you're going to be going backwards. We're going to have to take all these answers that we had and just how do we go backwards. That's what Chili's lesson is about. All right. Let's go over some division rules that you should know. Um, in this lesson, you're going to need to divide numbers. And you need to know, like, okay, how do I know what number goes into another number? So in this lesson, let's go over them. Let's do a little summary of what we've learned from earlier on. Um, divisible by 2. How do we know if a number is divisible by 2? Well, the rule is the number is even, which means it will end in a 2, 4, 6, 8, or a 0. All right, not really a 10, but it will end in a 0. So let's take a look. 18 ends in an 8. That's even. 21, not even. 50 ends in a 0. Good. Not good. Good. Good and good. So real quickly, I know that 18, 50, 98, 312, 630 are all divisible by 2. What about divisible by 3? This one's real interesting. So the sum of the digits, meaning we need to add the digits up and see if that's divisible by 3. So let's do the first one. 18. 18 is really 1 plus 9. Let's add those. 1 plus 8. Let's add those up. And what do we get? We get 9. So is 9 divisible by 3? Yes, that means 18 is going to be divisible by 3. Same thing with 21. Add the 2 and the 1 together. What's 2 plus 1? Well, that's 3. Is 3 divisible by 3? Yes, it is. So then I know that 21 is divisible by 3. Uh, 5 plus 0, 50. Well, that just gives me 5. Is 5 divisible by 3? Nope. There we go. And that's how simple 3s are. 75. I should know that's divisible by 3 because 7 plus 5 is 12, and 12 is divisible by 3. Perfect. 98. Um, 9 plus 7 is 17. That is not divisible by 3. 312. Even when I get into three-digit numbers, it shouldn't be too bad. 3 plus 1 is 4, plus 2 more is 6. Is 6 divisible by 3? Yes. Perfect. And the last one, 630. Um, that's going to be 9, so that's also divisible by 3. So look, I was able to check all those numbers and be like, yep, all these numbers are divisible by 3 and these ones are not. The last one, divisible by 5. That means the last digit is a 5 or a 0, so this one's a simple one. No, no, yes, yes, no, no, and yes. For 10s, all we're checking is the last digit of 0. So, no, no, yes, no, 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 and yes. Perfect. Okay, these will help you out going forward in this lesson. All right, thank you. All right, so let's try to use, uh, factor these terms, these polynomials using a distributive property. So 
So the steps. First, we need to find the greatest common factor. For each one of these problems, I've already looked at it, but my greatest common factor, whoop, my greatest common factor will be three. So for each one, my greatest common factor over here would be three, and my greatest common factor over here would be three. I know that every single one of these is divisible by three. Every single term that I have here is divisible by three. All right, so once you know your GCF, then rewrite each term using the GCF. So the, I'm gonna write it out the long way, but eventually you'll start getting faster at this. So I'm gonna write this one out as three times x, that's my first term, subtract, and nine can be written as three times three. All right, now once you have that, what you should notice is that once you have a common term like a over here, that is just gonna end up outside the parentheses. So all we're gonna do is rewrite this. So my common term would be the three and the three. So this will end up as three times and whatever's left over, x subtract three. And that one's done, game over. All right, let's try the second one. See if this, this will get started getting a little easier. So six is really three times 2x, and again, I know I'm taking a 3 because that's my greatest common factor in this problem. I have already analyzed it, and so my greatest common factor is 3. And we're going to subtract 9, which is 3 times 3. All right. Now, again, looking, what do we have? I see my common factor of 3, so that's going to come outside the parentheses. And I am left with a 2x and subtract 3. And game over, that's it. It's not too bad. I mean, the hardest part about this is, can you find your GCF? Um, that's the hardest part for students. Um, and then also, don't be lazy. Just rewrite it all out until you're good at it. So 3x squared, so my GCF over here is 3x, 3. So let's write this one out. So this is 3 times x squared. Subtract, and now we have a 3 times 3x. And then last, we have... Uh, 3 times 5. We're running out of room. Alright, so we have 3 times 5. Now, what do I notice? Well, I should have noticed because I already picked my common factor. It was 3. So I'm going to factor out a 3. But what are you left with after you factor out that 3? After you use the distributive property, you're left with a 3x squared. I subtract a 3x. And then last, a plus 5. Easy peasy. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to try the next problems. I want you to try four through nine, see if you can finish those ones, and then um, I will go over them as soon as, as soon as you resume the video. All right, good luck. This is what it all comes down to factoring completely um, in this in these three problems right here we're going to show you what we're going to expect you to do with all our factoring problems all right first thing i need you to do is look to simplify the problem so look for a gcf is there a gcf and if there is let's factor it out so i noticed that there is a greatest common factor in this problem it's going to be two i can i can take out a two out of all each one of those so i'm going to start going a little faster now i'm not going to write it all out for you but um, so I know that I can factor out a 2, 
and eventually you will get to this point too. So that's left me with x squared plus an x and then subtract 12. Perfect. All right. So again, first thing, try to take out the GCF. Now, factoring completely means we're going to have to keep going and keep factoring until you can't factor anymore. So now, looking at this one here, that's a trinomial. This is a trinomial. I, we know how to factor trinomials. We did a whole bunch of problems on that. So let's see if we can figure this out. Let's see if we can factor that. So I'm going to bring down my 2, just like normal, and I am going to factor out this little problem right here. Okay? Um, so let's see what we got here. Well, remember how we did our factor before? So how do you make an x squared? Well, I know that'll be x times x. And then what about the negative 12? Well, 12, there are factors of 12. There's many of them, 1 and 6. There's 2, 1 and 12, sorry. There's 2 and 6 and 3 and 4. But remember, I'm trying to make a positive 1. So it looks like in this problem, the 4 and the 3 will work. I should make the 4 to be the positive term and the 3 to be the negative. And there we go. And if you want to do your check real quick, because um, you want to make sure you got it, this is a 4x. And this is a negative 3x. So perfect, that would give them a 1x. So this is this is factored completely. Okay, so now as you get going through these problems, you're going to have to factor more than one time. And a lot of the times, you will have to take out the GCF first. So look at this problem here. I got 5, 15, and 350. That does not look like an easy problem to factor. But what I do notice is that there's a GCF. There's a GCF of 5. I know I can factor out a 5, so let's do that real quick. So if I factor out that 5, what am I left with? Well, for each one of these, I'll be left with the next squared, the next one a 3x, and the last one a negative 70. Perfect. Okay. And so now, let's see. What are my factors of 70? Um... Factor the set. Well, 70 ends with a zero, so I'm gonna just guess right now. I bet you it's gonna be the 10 times 7. And yes, I need to make a 3, so that looks like that'll work perfectly. Um, again, as you're going through these problems, when you start working on these bad boys, uh, knowing your multiplication tables will help you out so much. So I know this is gonna be x times x and 70. We'll confactor that to be a 10 and a 3. And what's, sorry, not a 10 and a 3, 10 and 7. And I should make the 10 the positive, and I should make the 7 the negative. And just double check your work just to make sure this right here would be 10x, and this would be negative 7x, and that does give me a positive 3. So that's perfect. So my answer for this problem, factored completely, is this one right here. All right. Also, it does work with difference of squares too. also. So in this problem, oh, you can do this one actually two different ways, but I'm going to do it with a GCF because I do see a GCF of, I do see a GCF of four. So I know I can factor out a four, which means that this will be four times X squared minus 25. Perfect. And then this should bring her back a reminder that this is a difference of squares. Those are two perfect squares. So that means that we should factor those as um, a plus b and a minus b. So real quick in this problem, so this will be x squared. So that's x times x. One's positive, one's minus, and 25 is just 5 times 5. And done. All right, so again... This is wrapping up our whole factoring unit. So by the time we're done with this one, there's one more thing that we'll teach you later on in another class, but um, this is the bare bones right here. This is what you should be able to do. This is what we're expected. And when we say factoring completely, we're going to have to mul do multiple steps of factoring. And yes, they'll get harder and harder as you go, but um, I hope this helps.